Hey everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of Flick News. Izola here with Flick Direct, and I've got a few things to update you on on what has happened in the past week in movie news. So grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and let's get this started. This year, Warner Brothers had announced that we would be getting more Lord of the Rings movie, and I had briefly touched upon that in one of the previous episodes, but didn't really have much to talk about because there really wasn't much to discuss. But we've gotten some new information, and here's what we know so far. Peter Jackson will be producing, and we should be seeing some familiar cast members appearing on the big screen, or we might be hearing their voices. One of the projects called The Hunt for Gollum, which is what I had brought up previously, will be directed by Andy Serkis, um, and obviously will be taking place a little bit before The Fellowship of the Ring. So we're really going to get kind of that origin story in a little more detail for Gollum. It sounded like this was going to be a two-part movie based on some things that Sir Ian McKellen had mentioned, but the screenwriter, Philippa Boyens, actually came out and said that it wouldn't actually be two movies, but rather a broader conceptual work um, based off of multiple live action movies that would be in production or in the works. She described The Hunt for Gollum as being a gripping story in Gollum's perspective between Bilbo's birthday and the Mines of Moria. So I think it's really going to give us a little bit more of that storyline that maybe we've been missing. Now we also have the animated feature that's coming out, which is The War of Rohirrim. And if that does really well, then you bet your bottom we're going to be getting a lot more, whether it's animated or live action. Everything's still in the works and we have more coming out, but once I hear that and it's relayed to us, I will definitely let you know and keep you posted. Next up, it was announced that Crypto will be joining the cast of the newest Superman movie. And I'm kind of excited about that because I've always loved Crypto. So it'll be nice to see him on the big screen. James Gunn actually announced that Crypto was based off of his rescue dog um, and kind of provided a little bit of information about that and how Crypto's character will be in the movie. A little chaotic, um, but overall a, a great little animal just like his pup. Gunn also talked about his pup, Ozu's challenging past and, you know, how this little pup just, you know, impacted his life, which we all love a good rescue story. Now, don't worry, Ozu is obviously much better behaved from when he first got him. So I think we're going to be able to see a lot of that within the character uh, as that movie progresses. As anticipation builds for this movie, which is set to be released July of 2025, I think many of us are curious as how to crypto is going to fit into the current dynamic of the movie. Gunn has mentioned how many new characters will actually be in the Superman film, and I'm not sure how I feel about it because there's a lot of characters, which means there's a lot that you have to pack in, literally cram in to one singular movie. And movies can't really be that much longer anymore because we all have the attention span of a gazelle. I am really hoping that this won't be a negative impact on the movie because all of us DC fans just really want the DC movies to get up off the ground. We really need this to work so that we can kind of have our Marvel Cinematic Universe in the DC Universe. So I'm really hoping that it makes sense to have all of these characters introduced and it doesn't really shoot them in the foot for adding all of them. I'm sure Gunn will be able to pull this off, but I am not setting my expectations very high because as we all know, we've kind of been let down in the past years. So fingers crossed that this works. We'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, nothing else has been released, so we can't really compare it to anything at this time. But once we have more information, I'll let you know. The Russo brothers are back. Yes. And they are bringing us The Electric State. And this is a post-apocalyptic road trip film based off of Simon Stallenberg's graphic novel. So it should be very interesting. I know we've had a lot of post-apocalyptic movies and shows, but... This one seems to have a little bit of a different plot twist, so I think we're going to enjoy this one. Now, we have a big cast here with Millie Bobby Brown, Chris Pratt, 
Giancarlo Esposito and Brian Cox. So they're not skimping out on, on the actors here. The film explores a world where us humans and AIs waged war back in the 90s and pretty much turned it into a wasteland filled with robots. So again, it's definitely a little different than what we've had in the past. So I'm really looking forward to this. The trailer features a slowed down version of Champagne Supernova, which is one of my favorite songs. So I'm really excited that it's in there. And it shows you the classic post-apocalyptic imagery that we all love. Um, we also get to see a glimpse of Millie Bobby Brown's character as well as Chris Pratt's um, as they embark on this journey to uncover a mechanical conspiracy. Ooh. The Electric State is set for release on March 14th, 2025. So stay tuned as we get more information and I will be posting it here. And for a spooky announcement before Halloween, we have Doug Jones set to portray Count in Nosferatu, A Symphony of Horror. And I'm kind of surprised he hasn't played this role yet or has done something with this because, I mean, if you have seen his repertoire of work, uh, it should fit in there somewhere. Uh, currently, he is still on Star Trek Discovery and, you know, he has done a lot of work that just proves that this would be a great addition, um, especially his work with uh, in Hellboy. So I'm really excited to see this. I'm also a huge Dracula Count Orlock fan. It's just, I think it's really gonna work and I can't wait to see it. Now this particular film is going to focus on the real estate agent, Thomas Hutter, and how he basically discovers uh, Orlock's true vampiric nature while he's trying to uh, facilitate a sale, basically. Jones had mentioned in an interview with Screen Rant that it took almost a decade to get this off the ground. And it actually originally started with a Kickstarter, uh, which I have found that there have been a lot of great things on the Kickstarter website. So definitely check those out because there might be something that you are really interested in that you could back. I know I've had a few that I have done and great giveaways and offers with those. So definitely check them out. So if you want to get your spooky season started right with a nice little fun horror movie, you can go and get Nosferatu, A Symphony of Horror on Prime right now for $4.99. And that's to own it. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And you get to watch it every year or I mean, anytime during the year. I watch spooky stuff all the time. And with that, this concludes this week's episode of Flick News. Please be sure to like and subscribe to all of our channels so you never miss out on any entertainment news. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.